Let's go to some growing concerns this afternoon about how investments are going to be made under Labor's new multi-billion dollar Made in Australia plan. Today's announcement that $1 billion will be invested in a US-based quantum computing company has done little to ease concerns. The joint funding from the federal and Queensland governments to build a so-called fault-tolerant, commercially useful quantum computer in Brisbane has raised a lot of questions. Joining me now to discuss is Shadow Government Services Minister, Paul Fletcher. Paul, thank you for your time. A lot of secrecy around the selection process to get to the point that this uh, billion dollars from taxpayers was awarded to this company today. There doesn't seem to be a hell of a lot of transparency and this is a lot of money. Good to be with you, Peter, and that's right. This process has been clouded in secrecy. Uh, there was there was no public transparent expression of interest process to call for applications. A small number of companies, as I understand it, were invited to participate, but they were required to sign non-disclosure agreements. And as I understand it, the terms made it look like this had all been written so that Cy Quantum was going to be the winner. Of course, this is also a huge amount of money, $940 million. Uh, the government's been very cagey about what the commercial terms are, equity and debt, what's the mix, what's the interest rate on the loan, how long before it has to be repaid, what rights does the government and ultimately taxpayers get for putting in this taxpayer's money? Will there be uh, a share of ownership of the company? Will there be rights to the intellectual property that's developed? Will there be a share of uh, commercial royalties? None of that has been disclosed and it's hard to have much confidence that the government uh, that this, this Labor government has uh, negotiated in the way that commercial investors would. But I think there's a bigger question. Mm. Is it appropriate to risk so much taxpayers' money on a technology that on, any, that on any view is several years away from being commercialisable? Is it appropriate to risk so much taxpayers' money on one company? Uh, I think those are all questions that taxpayers would be asking right now. Yeah, Paul, when I was digging around today, I, I noticed that Cy Quantum, this is the company, was only registered as a company in Australia about a year ago. And it was only within a week uh, before the national quantum strategy from the government was actually even released. Now, I think it's fair that Labor explains why they chose this particular company. As I said, you know, there are other companies here in Australia. One involves a former Australian of the Year, the quantum physicist Michelle Simons. She's got a company based in Sydney, yet we've gone with this offshore mob that's only just been registered in Australia. Yeah, look, let's be clear. Um, Australia uh, is very competitive globally when it comes to quantum computing. There's great research being done over many years at UNSW, at Sydney University, at ANU, at a number of other universities. There are several companies that are already involved in commercialising technology with people working here in Australia. So an obvious question is, why has the government chosen to allocate this very large amount of money to a company that's not based in Australia, it's based in the US. Yes, some of its founders are Australian. They've been working overseas for many years. Nothing wrong with that. But when you listen to Minister Husick, uh, he seems to be suggesting that bringing Australians home is one of the justifications for this very large investment. I think there's a real question about the impact this might have on market perceptions of all of those other Australian-based quantum computing companies because the Australian government is effectively saying, well, we've looked across the board and we've chosen uh, Cy Quantum instead of all of the Australian-based companies. Does that do damage to their capacity to raise money? A number of those companies have raised significant money in the private marketplace, in the commercial marketplace, and are making very solid progress. Uh, so I think there is a non-trivial risk that this actually does mm. damage to a number of uh, well-developed, locally-based quantum computing companies. What concerns me, Paul, this program, and this was discussed with Ross Greenwood last week, this, this Made in Australia, uh, Future Australia program, uh, he picked up a green alumina company that got a $400 million grant uh, in recent days. He said that prior to receiving that grant, last year the company had only booked $25,000 in revenue. 
like this one, very new, startup based, again like this, all these non-disclosure agreements, commercial and confidence when you ask questions, surely taxpayers are owed more transparency here. Absolutely, and the coalition is very concerned at the way that the Albanese government is splashing around taxpayers' money, and as you rightly say, a complete lack of process. If this was a private sector venture capital company, uh, they would have to account, uh, be uh, accountable to investors. They'd have to disclose a lot of information. Uh, and But at least you would have the, the confidence that there were people involved in making these investment decisions who have some experience in doing this. What we've got now is a collection of mm. former union officials uh, splashing around huge amounts of taxpayers' money. And what we know is that Minister Husick visited Cy Quantum in Silicon Valley in both late 2022 and early 2023. And subsequent to that point, a process got underway within his department. Uh, the indications are that it was not a public or transparent process. In fact, we know that. But the indications also are, as I understand it, there was significant disquiet expressed from a range of uh, sources across government that were asked to provide advice. And that would be so for a whole host of reasons. Very large amount of money, a bet on one company, a bet on one technology. Look, this is being positioned as a manufacturing program or a manufacturing uh, funding. But what we know on any view is that this technology is early stage. It is several years away from turning into something that is uh, robust, reliable and commercialisable if it ever gets to that point. Again, mm. that is not to question the quality of the quantum research being done by SciQuantum or indeed by a whole range of great companies located here in Australia. It is to question whether this is a wise and judicious use of, tax, use of taxpayers' money or whether there's a very real risk that hundreds of millions of dollars of taxpayers' money are going to be squandered. Paul Fletcher, thank you.